the cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back everybody, we're live here at EMC World 2014. It's a big event, over 12,000 people here. We haven't had the official number yet, but uh, I'm here with Steve Keniston. This is the data protection and availability drill down spotlight that we do each year. We go deep at EMC World, bring on technologists like Stephen Manley and, and practitioners, really to find out what's happening at the front line. And Craig Wurzberger is here. He's a systems engineer at Sub-Zero. Craig, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having Great me. Great to see you. Sub-Zero, those, those cool, you know, appliances that everybody wants. But tell us a little bit about Sub-Zero, what your role is there. Uh, Sub-Zero Sub is a, obviously a manufacturer of very, very high-end, uh, both cooking and refrigeration appliances. Uh, been around since the 1940s, and uh, we actually brought in the Wolf appliance and the, uh, the cooking line in, in the year 2000. Uh, my role there is a systems engineer, so I'm basically in charge of everything involving servers, storage, backup, data protection. Uh, been there for 14 years now, so I've got Got my feet pretty wet in that area. So how would you describe the evolution of Sub-Zero's IT environment in the past 14 years? Um, it's actually pretty pretty large. I mean, originally the size of the entire IT department was about eight people. We now have a staff of over 40. I think we're at about 45 now. Um, that includes not only the systems and network people, but also our application development and our, uh, our system I, uh, or I'm sorry, our IBM, IBM I area. So what are the big systems or applications that you're running? Well, we run, we're a Microsoft shop, so we run a lot of SQL, we run a lot of, uh, we run Microsoft Exchange, that kind of stuff. Uh, we do, our ERP system is a, uh, is a system I, or an IBM I, so uh, we're running that M4XA to do our ERP and our item, uh, item inventory. Okay, so talk a little bit about um, how your data protection environment has evolved uh, over the, over the past, probably not 14 years, yeah. we don't have to go back that far, but let's say in the past five to seven years. Yeah, about five years ago we were running just a uh, semantic net backup uh, uh, environment running on an SL500 tape library, 150 tape capacity. Um, extremely effective at the time, however, with the increase in storage and the increase in things that we had added to the systems over the years, it suddenly went from adequate to completely inadequate in a matter of a few years, probably. So um, we ended up getting into a situation where our backup system was not able to handle what our current load was as far as data protection. And we had to, had to come up with a solution to find a way to, to fix it. Why was it inadequate? Was it you're not hitting backup windows or just not or reliable? Or basically you would, you would said it was semantic, so writing all that to tape. Right, then, okay. it was a little bit of everything actually. The environment had expanded so rapidly. We've got, we, I think we went from somewhere in the vicinity of two to five terabytes of space to 20 terabytes of space in a matter of two years. So a lot of a lot of data just came flying in. Not to mention we had uh, we had implemented virtualization with VMware during that time. So we went from having I'd say 20 to 30 physical uh, physical servers up to close to 100 virtual servers with you know in a matter of years. So once again we just we just completely ran out of space. Uh, the other problem was that uh, we were unable to to anticipate what we were going to have from a file system standpoint. So that also increased in space. Uh, the SIFS backup that we were trying to do, just it, it just couldn't handle it. it was, we were, had a situation where um, if I was lucky enough to have a 72 hour window, I might get a full backup. So it was, it was just okay. So And you never so get a 72 hour backup. Right, no, so it was, I, <laughs> yeah, maybe Memorial Day got lucky. So if I asked you what was keeping you up at night, it would be doing backups. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, it was, did I get one last night or not? <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing kept me up at night is knowing that the next morning I was going to be putting in anywhere between 20 and 40 tapes just to handle maybe a day or two's worth of backups and having to rip out the other ones, put new ones in. It was using up, uh, I think at the time we saw it was using up eight to 10 hours of my week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and you were, you, now, we'll talk about virtualization at the time. Mm -hmm. What was the virtualization strategy and how fast were you virtualizing? Uh, we actually, um, we implemented our virtualization I believe in 2008 and uh, it went from one or two systems to, we were at 75% virtualized uh, in a year and a half. We actually, uh, the ROI on our virtualization project, we hit it in less than three months. So it, we, it was a huge flip. We had a, a, a whole bunch of servers that were ready to, 
just die and we just flip them so all So did over. you transform your backup uh, coincident with, with that sort of virtualization ascendancy? Or? No, we, we ended up just kind of using what we had for a while. We, we didn't finally get around to implementing the Avamar system into 2012, but that was my, I believe, third attempt to get that system brought in house. See, that must have really, I mean, that, that level, that rapid pace of virtualization must have put even more stress on your backup. It did, yeah, absolutely it did, because now, from our point of view, we didn't really have a virtual backup strategy. It was more of a physical turned virtual. You know, we, we had we treated them as if they were physical. Without servers. as much physical. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we just just couldn't do it. Okay, so then you bring in Avamar. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Well, talk about that that whole process. Uh, we brought in Avamar in March of 2012, and uh, it was probably one of the most successful implementations that we've done, probably right up with VMware. Um, the the system was brought in house in February. It was brought up on March. March and by the end of March we were in full production, full backups, and I was already starting to turn down our net backup solution. You were at Avamar at the time. Yeah, right? yeah. So I have, I have a question. So you had said that um, this transformation took place over quite a period of time. You said right. Avamar actually replaced the uh, data domain, some data domain that you had in house. No, no, the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the, Av the Avamar came first, the data domain was brought in later. Data domain was yeah. brought in later? Yeah, we brought in the data domain mainly as a virtual tape library substitution because we were just doing, again, tapes through right. our IBMI. So once I brought in Avamar and removed tapes from that environment, my poor system engineer that handled all the IBMI stuff, all of a sudden he's the one that's dealing with tapes all left tape. and right, and he started to get a little cranky, so <laughs> we did find out the data domain would do the VTLs, and we're able to bring that in and eliminate tapes from that as well. So, so now you have a hybrid environment? Yes. D yeah? Yeah, and we, we'll we, use, uh, we use the Avamar as our main, uh, our main backup. However, the, uh, our virtual tape libraries, as well as a number of our SQL backups, go on to the data domain. And then we also have uh, we have matching grids uh, in our in our main facility is in uh, is in Fitchburg, Wisconsin. Uh, we also have a facility in Goodyear, Arizona, and we have matching grids on both sides, replicating back and forth. So, so what? So post bringing in Avamar, uh, talk give us the before and after. I mean, your your RT, RPO was a mess. Right. Your RTO was. A Pretty much not existed. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, what kind of business results did you see? Oh uh, well, within uh, the biggest one that we can actually show is that our, our NDMP-based backup, our SIFS-based backup, was the one that would never finish. We were, we just couldn't do it. I went from not being able to finish that at all to you know obviously beyond the first, the first backup, backup, which takes a while. Uh, once that came through, I now see those things back up in a matter of an hour, maybe two hours on a bad day. Um, so I'm getting full backups, um, and some of the uh, with the, some of the upgrades that the Avamar's done with the newer versions of the OS and that, uh, and the ability to proxy within the virtual environment, I'm now seeing my backup window shrink even further. We got it down to under 12 hours. We then shrunk it to eight, and I'm down below six. So that's an I mean incredible change. And I heard you guys talking about data. Then, you, then subsequently, you brought in data domain. Yeah, we brought in the data domain a little bit later, uh, mainly because it was the focus of the data domain was for that virtual tape library ability. Yeah. Okay. So, we, and then the the SQL was a, a nice little add-on. Okay. So that's a, now that's a different infrastructure. Are you bringing? Are you are you bringing those? Are you trying to bring them together? Are you trying to push bits EMC and, to bring them together? Bits and pieces. Uh, um, bits and pieces. We are. I. The one thing that we did push over to the data domain is our exchange backups. So we were uh, we were trying to do those on the Avamar, and it just it, it worked fine. But it, we were able to actually decrease the backup window by another hour by moving those backups over to the data domain through the DD Boost. So, um, but for the most part, yeah, the data domain and the, and the Avamar kind of do their own separate realms. But so it, it's worked very well. What would you like to see? So, so as Dave points out, right, and, and I think we've seen this through a number of different folks coming up here and talking mm -hmm. to us about their infrastructure and how it's transformed and how they've had different products to solve uh, to solve different problems. Anything you'd like to see from EMC to be able to either pull these together or make life simpler? I mean, what's missing from that overall picture that would make your life even better? Well, I mean, some of the things I can think of is that some you're seeing some of the, the really cool additional uh, abilities added to the data domain that aren't necessarily added onto the Avamar side. Um, I'd like to see some of that come along. I know that the uh, one of the neat things they're working with the data domain is the ability to actually bring up uh, the virtual, like a virtual backup, bring it up online, and then you know v motion it over or v storage motion it over live. Um, just stuff like that. Just being able to meld those two together, it would be really cool if it actually became a single environment with a single pane of glass to look at both. Uh, right now, they've kind of got there. You've got the single dashboard now with an Avamore. That's a much, uh, it's a vast improvement. But I could, it's nice to see that 
get to mesh a little bit better. So what would be the one thing you would give advice to your, your, your fellow co-hosts, your fellow practitioners about, if you're going to make this type of a transformation, a heads up, you should probably pay attention to this. Um, I guess, hmm. I guess the best best advice I could give them is that you just you, you got to know it's going to be a little bit slow at the beginning. I mean, obviously the initial backups take quite a while. Um, if you try to implement replication, the one unfortunate side effect of our replication is that we weren't able to see the device prior, so we're sending across the country. So that took a little while. I, I, that took a long while, <laughs> um, but it did actually eventually start working. So it's just stuff like that. Just know that it's not going to be immediate, but you're going to see some immediate results that you wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't be able to do with your current system. Once that initial seeding is over, you're kind of on your way. Right, right. right. And, and now I, the best part I have is, you talked about not being able to sleep at night. <laughs> I sleep like a baby now. <laughs> um, every morning I get in and I look and everything's gone through. If there was a, a minor problem, it's usually, <laughs> I hate to say it's usually user end. You know, they shut down a system when they weren't supposed to or anything like that. But for the most part, I get solid backups every night. All right, we got to run, but uh, I'll give you the last word. Uh, EMC World for you. Um, you know, what's your takeaway? This, this is my first one ever. So oh, wow. it's, it's, it's actually kind of cool to be here. It's neat to, to actually see what all you guys are doing. Some of the some of the new uh, new technologies that haven't even been released that, yet that they're seeing, especially in the data protection and the storage migration realms. Some really cool stuff and I'm looking forward to seeing it in the real world. Excellent, Craig. Well, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, great to see you. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully see you next year at yeah. uh, EMC World or VM World or wherever the Cube is next. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from EMC World 2014.